Hello, and welcome to Study Strategies. I am Jeff S. from Carlini's College, and I am here today to talk about some ways to improve your study habits. Here are our learning objectives. During this presentation, we will review some common learning techniques. We will identify some alternative study strategies. We will compare and contrast outcomes based on current psychological research and we will recommend a new study regimen. Your learning techniques might not be serving you very effectively. How did you learn to study? In math class, you learn math. In science class, you learn science, but have you ever had a class about how to study for your classes? For many students, study techniques are based on a rich oral tradition passed from one generation to the next without much thought or consideration. One common study technique is the use of highlighters, or perhaps underlining, to call out the significant parts of a text. In a computer technology text, every sentence is important. For example, in a history class, you might need to remember the people and dates of significant events. Highlighting can help emphasize those, but for your computer systems classes, you need to be familiar with individual topics, but also how these topics fit in the complete whole. Highlighting is not itself bad per se, but it's not particularly useful either. Another common study technique is rereading. Read a chapter or a passage, and then read it again and again. This is also not a bad technique per se, but like highlighting, rereading does not help you fit concepts into the big picture. Consider what is colloquially called cramming, a panicked last minute session to learn and absorb as much as possible in as short a time as possible. Paradoxically, cramming works in the short term, but memory fades in the long term. In this chart, the blue line shows outcomes for students who cram, and the orange line shows spaced study, a term I'll explain later in this presentation. On the horizontal axis, above the heading one week, notice how the blue line is higher on the vertical scale than the orange line. This means that those who crammed did a little better on an assessment than the spaced studiers. However, move to the right and notice the results above the heading four weeks. The orange line is now significantly above the blue line. Cramming works, but it doesn't last. And this brings us to a common misconception for students. Familiarity is not understanding. You might think that you understand the topic, but do you really? How can you verify this? One psychological experiment measured students' actual learning with their own perception of learning. And when compared against a control group, students consistently rated their understanding higher than their performance actually indicated. We are not always the best judges of ourselves. There are other ways we can fool ourselves but they all fall under the heading of illusions of learning. What you think that you know can be different from what you actually know. Don't be lured by these illusions. Okay, so if those are examples of what not to do, what are some better alternatives? One technique is called repeated retrieval. Find a way to demonstrate the material to be learned. This could be with flashcards, or working out sample problems from the text, or explaining a topic to a friend. You need some way to interact with the material that forces you to retrieve it. And don't just do it once. Repeat the process of retrieving information from your brain. Another technique is called spaced study. With this technique, you don't study in one long session. 
you space it out over a longer period of time. The interval doesn't really matter. What matters is that you give your brain some time to process all of the input. Even in the downtime between sessions, the brain is at work organizing what you are learning. You can interleave your study. Memory is improved by alternating the material to be learned. So mix up the topics that you study instead of using a sequential order. And don't work on one type of a problem at a time. It's the variety of study that helps with retention. Suggestions for implementation. You can apply the techniques I mentioned for your classes. But how? Avoid the easy way. The reason that highlighting and rereading are popular is that they're usually pretty easy. If you're reading a passage in a text, you can highlight without much additional effort. But successful study techniques require more effort. Take ownership of your learning. The professors, advisors, and staff are all available to help you, but they're not going to do your work for you. You are responsible for your learning. This might differ greatly from your high school experience, where teachers and counselors often manage your time and your tasks. In college, you need to take ownership of your learning. This requires a tremendous amount of self-discipline. You should plan ahead. Develop a timeline or schedule that does not require last-minute cramming. If class meets every Wednesday, don't wait until the following Tuesday to complete the work. Use a calendaring app on your phone or a paper-based business day planner and figure out times during the week when you'll work on what material. A schedule that interleaves topics will enhance memory. You should quiz yourself. Find ways to demonstrate your understanding of the material. Don't think to yourself, yeah, I know this. Find a way to express it. This could be saying answers aloud, solving problems on paper, or alternating questions and answers with a friend. It is this process of retrieval that helps cement learning. Mix it up. Do not let your class schedule determine your study schedule alternate the topics that you study. So in summary then, some study methods are not especially effective. Improved outcomes are demonstrated by current psychological research. You should use techniques that have been shown to work. These techniques are more difficult, more time consuming, and don't always yield immediate results. But if you're enrolled in college to pursue a career in technology, you will need mastery for years and decades to come. You are in charge of your destiny, and your study effort now will pay off in the future. I thank you for watching this presentation.